The condition that causes sudden fainting due to drops in heart rate and blood pressure. Now have access to groundbreaking treatment here in the region. Joining us now is cardio electrophysiologist at MedStar Washington Hospital Center, Dr. Apostolis Simpolis. I hope I got that all right. A lot of syllables. You're here. absolutely going right. Thank you, Marina, for hosting me and thank you for raising awareness of our community for health related topics. Yeah, what exactly is this? Because it, it seems as though fainting spells, and I think a lot of people can probably relate when they get their blood drawn, when they see something they can't handle, they just pass out. You're exactly correct. You're spot on. So, what's happening is that uh, syncope, what is syncope? This is a transient loss of consciousness. The most common cause of uh, syncope is what we call vasovagal syncope. So it's estimated approximately one out of three people will experience a vasovagal syncope in their lifetime. So, and this is very common in patients, especially between 10 and 30 years old. So what happens is the vagus nerve that carries signals from the brain to the heart, on some occasions it starts over-functioning. So uh, in situations like stress, when you see a needle, overcrowded places, uh, you know, pain, and in combination with dehydration, then uh, the vagus nerve over functions, over stimulates, slows the heart a lot, and they can be dropping blood pressure and people may pass out. Usually people experience a uh, blurry vision, nausea, uh, some prodromal symptoms like clammy hands, and then they eventually pass out. On most occasions, after a uh, you know, detailed history and some uh, exams by KGs, like echocardiograms and ruling out any significant other uh, conditions, uh, heart conditions, we make the diagnosis of vasovagal syncope. People respond most of the times very well on uh, conservative measurements, like we recommend uh, the uh, you know aggressive hydration, avoiding triggers, uh, compression stockings, and on some occasions medications. But sometimes this vasovagal syncope can be very severe. People can have like. Uh, no heart rate for several rhythm, uh, for, sec for several seconds, mm -hmm. and even no coordination between the upper chambers and the lower chambers of the heart. And then this is when you start the discussion about potentially placing a pacemaker. And imagine when we mainly have patients, young patients between 10 and 30 years old, when you have a conversation about placing a permanent pacemaker, it's not a pleasant discussion to have. So yeah, nowadays we have this New, uh, new procedure, and we're the first medical system to offer this procedure in our region. So, first of all, I want to underscore that this is not the standard of care yet, mm. but uh, very recently, in our recent uh, Heart and Read conference in San Diego, there was a presentation of very promising results. A study showed that there is 78 degrees in episodes of vasovagal syncope and 97% decrease on uh, the need of pacemaker. So, yes, uh, we offer this procedure here in, uh, you know, in Washington, D.C., and the, so far, the results are very promising. What does this procedure entail? So, yes, so I, I will tell you, we, you know, we bring the patient here at the hospital one day, we deliver anesthesia, the patient is sleeping, and then we go from the groin and we put some catheter inside the heart. And by using cutting and cutting edge technology, which is provided by Mester Health and some sophisticated methods, we identify the endings of the nerve. And we apply some heating energy, some burning, burning energy. So we modify the effect of the vagus nerve in the heart. We decrease its effect. So this procedure lasts one to two hours. Then we take every, all the catheters out of the body. And then depending on how the procedure went, the patient can go home or even stay one day for observation. You very clearly stated this is not the standard of care. Uh, obviously, this would be, it seems as though, for extreme conditions for someone who's having multiple fainting spells, right? I mean, at what point would this be Correct. considered? Correct. So this is not yet the standard of care because we don't have the data. I'm suspecting that down the road in the next few years, well, more and more uh, we'll, proceed, we'll perform this procedure more commonly than we have the data to support this in our guidelines. So usually we, we recommend this procedure in patients. We have fainting spells, no heart disease that can cause fainting spells. We clearly see that this is effect due to a vagus, vagus nerve from mom monitors like uh, monitorings like xyopathies, and we can see this effect of uh, or other tests like head ductile test or uh, some uh, heart recording devices, then this population which suffer from many episodes and we're discussing about that the next step is placing a pacemaker, that's a very good alternative for someone having to uh, having a pacemaker for uh, many, many years. Yeah, definitely. Incredible advancements in science. We appreciate you sharing it here on the DMV Zone. Thank you so much for hosting me. Take care, Marina.